So let's get started with the presentations and Francois with the sky this month. Thank you very much, Paul. August 2022, there's a number of things that we will be able to see. Of course, I'm going to start with our closest neighbor, the moon. And let's take a look at the lunar phases, the dates thereof, because one of the things will be a big disappointment to you. First quarter happening almost immediately, two days from now. So we'll have some additional light to contend with if we're out there trying to observe. Of course, Friday, August the 12th, full moon. It's the Anishinaabe Thimbleberry Moon, giving recognition to our First Nations in Ontario. But that also will have an impact on one of the other celestial events that we will want to look at this particular month. August the 19th, of course, is the last quarter and new moon when I will be out there doing some extra observing, should it be clear, is the 27th. So get yourself ready for those particular opportunities, especially from Friday, August the 19th through to the 27th. And be sure that you're out there getting whatever observing opportunities you can, and you'll see some of those in a few minutes. So let's take a look at where Mercury is going to be. It's on the 4th, it's visible in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's challenging for anyone in the Mid-Northern Hemisphere and the latitudes here. In other words, it sucks. To be honest, it's greatest elongation on the 27th in the Western sky, but it's gonna be really hard to see. And from Stellarium, you can see here that Mercury is just this tiny dot that's to the west of the due west and the moon is in the sky at the same time. Let's take a look at Venus because that of course is always a beautiful object to observe, rising early in the month next to or very close to Castor and Pollux. By the month's end, it is 14 degrees from the sun in morning twilight. So this is a good opportunity for you to get out and take a look at it. You can see here where it is. It's really quite close to Castor and Pollux right there in the east. And that will give you a great opportunity to do some photographic work potentially if you are into or planetary observing, good opportunity to do it. You can see here it's at 05.27.40 in the morning that I took this from my Stellarium. It gives you an opportunity there. The one key thing is, it's going to be four degrees south of the moon on August the 25th. So this will give you a nice opportunity if you've got a pair of binoculars to view the two together in the same field of view. Uh, 10 by 50 binoculars tend to give you about a full five degrees of view. So that will help getting it all in there. The planet Mars is in conjunction with Uranus on August the 1st. So this would be an opportunity for someone to actually take a look at this. And we have a right angle triangle here for all intents and purposes. You've got the Pleiades here, Mars, and there's the moon. So it makes a nice triangle in the sky for us. Good opportunity for you to be able to get out there to observe that. It's with the last quarter, it's three degrees to the north on August the 19th. Again, a nice opportunity for potential photographic work with wide field, if you're interested. Jupiter, of course, has two double shadow transits. They're both on Tuesdays. So if you're working, it's probably not the best opportunity for you. It's close to the waning gibbous moon on the second, or it's two degrees away, it's south August the 15th. So this will give you a great opportunity. And you can see here it's in Pisces or very close to it, very close together. Good opportunity for anyone who wants again to take a picture, wide angle, even with your cell phone would be a good opportunity for you. Saturn, the magnitude right now is about plus 0.3 and the rings are tilted 13 degrees. So the north side of it is visible as far as we are looking out there to see it. 
and it's in Capricorn, so you will have the opportunity to see it. It's four degrees south of the moon, August 11th, 12th. So you have this good opportunity once again to find Saturn very easily. The planet's Uranus, it's occulted by waning, the waning gibbous moon on the 18th. Technically, it's visible in Canada, but it's in broad daylight. So fat lot of chance of really being able to get that. But Uranus is actually stationary as of August the 24th and then begins retrograde motion for 22 weeks. So this will be what you'll be looking at. And here is, we have the Pleiades again, Mars, and oh my Lord, there's Uranus. So this is actually a right angle triangle right here. Good opportunity there to find it easily. Uh, you will, of course, need reasonably dark skies. Good pair of binoculars. You'll pick it up fairly easily as long as you're looking in the right place. Again, this is fairly early in the morning, so you're going to have to be up before sunrise to really enjoy it. Neptune rises in the mid-evening and is heading towards its opposition September the 16th. You can see here that it's fairly close to Jupiter. You can see here it was just after midnight and it's just a tiny dot. Get yourself a good little telescope to have a look at that one. Now we come to why I said earlier that the moon is going to be impacting something. A lot of us love to go out for the Perseids and the Perseids are going to be August 11th, 12th and 13th. The 12th and 13th is technically the peak and full moon is on the 12th. So of course, another year where you won't see too much, unfortunately, but you can see where the radiant is out of Perseus, just below Cassiopeia there. And I don't recall how many times in the years that I've wanted to go and observe these Perseids and have the moon interfering. It's just been, it seems like every time I plan on it, that's what happens. For the minor planets, Vesta is actually going to provide a great photographic opportunity. It's at on it's at opposition August the 22nd. And for any of you astrophotographers, you should be able to grab some of the Helix Nebula and get Vesta in that same field of view. So that should be something that you might want to consider as a great opportunity. Let's take a look at some potential binocular objects that would be worth observing this month. So I would say to you, August the 19th, of course, last quarter of the moon and the Mars and Pleiades all in the same field of view, roughly. Easily visible in 10 by 50 binoculars. So you'll have this set up right here. And that will be a nice close clustering as long as you don't mind doing it at 02.30 in the morning. M13, of course, is always spectacular if you go out to observe. And in 10 by 50 binoculars, this is approximately what you will see. Uh, and in that same field of view, if you are not in the same field of view, but nearby, if you want to use your binoculars and then jump up to M92 over here in Hercules, that's another option. It will be less spectacular than M13, but still worth going out to observe. The Perseus double cluster. So this is two NGC objects, uh, well worth going out, not as spectacular, but you'll notice there's M110 and M32. So you're in a very easy to find area. If you find M103, M34, and the Andromeda galaxies, basically when you're just here, it's just slightly less than halfway. And you just cut up and you can see the two objects there. And that is what the field of view will look like. So you will have the two uh, clusters, the double cluster there visible for you. I highly recommend doing this. Also worth viewing, of course, in my opinion, I love taking a look at it because there's so much in the Southern sky towards the center of our galaxy. And so M11, the wild duck cluster, 
all-time favorite for me in summer to go and take a look at it. And there's so many other objects. And in 10 by 50 binoculars, the wild duck cluster is in the dead center here. It's not as spectacular, but if you just start scanning around that area, you can see you've got M26, you've got the Sagittarius star cloud, which will stand out if you get to a fairly dark sky site. So that's M24 down here, M16 and 17. It gives you lots of opportunities to go looking at something that is worth getting at. For satellites, what will we actually have? Well, for the next few days, all of the ISS passages are unfortunately daylight. The Chinese space station there, that one, you can see here, we've got a couple of really good passes. Again, these are in uh, UTC. So you'll have to just adjust with the time change that we have here. But the brightest one is magnitude 1.1 on August the 6th. And it's a decent height above the horizon. So you've got a couple of them here, three of them that are really well placed if you want to go out and observe that particular satellite. Space launches. So of course, SpaceX is on its march to being able to launch more rockets this year than ever before in their history. They have a planned launch August the 4th. So basically tomorrow, Lunar Orbiter designed by Korea Aer Aerospace and the Research Institute to demonstrate lunar solar survey resources and produce a full topographic map of the moon. Their next launch after that, I'm not as thrilled about. Some people will be August the 9th, some more Starlink satellites going up. So if you're an astrophotographer, those really suck in my opinion because I get wonderful streaks going through my uh, images. We also have a United Launch Alliance launch that's scheduled for August the 4th, and that one is launching the U.S. Space Force's sixth space-based infrared system and geosynchronous satellite. So if you are one of those individuals that likes to watch the launches, which sometimes I do, it's actually a lot of fun. There are also hopes that the SLS, so NASA's Space Launch System, will actually launch scheduled August the 29th for its first test flight with an uncrewed Orion spacecraft. At the same time, they're going to take a bunch of additional things out there. So they will hope to go around the moon, orbit it, come back. The capsule will come back and splash down in the Pacific. But they're also going to launch 10 CubeSat rideshare payloads with the Artemis 1 mission. Not to be outdone, there's also Roscosmos. So the Russian Space Federation is planning a launch sometime in August. We're still waiting to see exactly when. And of course, we're very close to the end of what I have for you this evening. But guess who else is planning a launch? India Space Research Organization is looking to launch microsatellites. It's a demo on August the 6th. And as a final launch there's electron lab and rocket lab limited who are still planning but they're supposed to be doing this in august so there you have it folks that's what's on tap for this month back to you paul i appreciate you taking the time to present to us and a great presentation of course um do we have any questions for francois emma um, no, we actually didn't get any questions. 